When it comes to deciding which camera to buy to kickstart your wedding filmmaking journey, it can get overwhelming really fast, especially if you don't know what you need or what to look for. So today's video is geared, no pun intended, towards which camera I would buy if I was starting over in my wedding filmmaking business. Let's be realistic for a second. When we are first getting started, most of us don't have a ton of money to invest and throw towards the top of the line camera systems. So today I'm gonna try to be as frugal as I can be and offer some relatively low budget options. But keep in mind, you're still gonna have to invest in quality lenses, audio support gear, and a very large alcoholic beverage to wash it all down. The first camera that I would buy if I had to start over is gonna be the Canon R8. At the start of your journey, you really shouldn't be loyal to one brand over the other. You wanna date around until you find the perfect match. And one of the biggest reasons why I would choose Canon from the start is because of their reliable autofocus, their beautiful colors right out of the box, and their simple to use menu system. And the Canon R8 is one of Canon's first low budget mirrorless options for photographers and videographers. It has the same sensor as the R6 Mark II. It offers full frame 4K 10-bit internal recording at 60 frames per second uncropped, which is absolutely amazing and surprising. Surprise, mother Along with a two hour recording limit and C-Log3. The only downside towards the Canon R8 and I think just new Canon mirrorless cameras in general is the limitation in third party lenses, overheating concerns, especially within the small mirrorless cameras and the codec limitations, unlike most Sony systems. But nonetheless, for all the features that you get, this is still a great camera at an even greater price. If you've been on this channel long enough, you've seen me talk about the Sony FX30. This has been one of my favorite cinema cameras to date, not just because of the price tag, but because of all the features that you get as well. 4K 10-bit 422 recording, dual SD card or CF Express card slots, Cine EI, Gamma Display Assist, User LUTs, dual base ISO, S Cine Tone and Log Profiles. I mean, this camera is an absolute workhorse, especially for wedding filmmakers. The downsides, of course, is the limitations in low light because it is an APS-C camera, which I realize may be a deterrent for most because at weddings, we're dealing with low lit receptions all the time. So having a full frame option is probably a better fit for those environments, but you can still capture these moments really well with the FX30, as long as you have additional light support that can accommodate. And I don't think it's a deal breaker, especially not in my own opinion, for wedding filmmakers to consider, especially for their first camera. Next is the camera system that stole my heart back in 2017, and that is Panasonic. I did a video about the GH5 recently that is actually under the $1,000 price tag, which you can find up above if you wanna check that video out. But this camera today, I'm gonna talk about the Panasonic GH6. Panasonic has been known for their beautiful image stabilization, 10-bit 4K internal recording, even way back in 2017, dual SD card slots, but the downside mostly is within the autofocus and low light capabilities. The autofocus has slightly improved with the GH6, but really where this camera shines for me lies within its internal recording features. You're gonna be able to get beautiful handheld footage right out of the box with this camera, Capture log footage internally, which is a great upgrade considering with the GH5, you had to buy this separately to include it in your camera. You have built-in active cooling, suck it Canon. And overall, it's just a reliable option for filmmakers to consider, especially if you're gonna be capturing any kind of live event or a wedding day. Sure, the autofocus isn't as competitive and it's a micro four third sensor, so you're gonna be dealing with a crop factor and low light limitations, but I think where this camera lacks, it definitely truly shines in everything else that you get for the price tag. And I always find that APS-C cameras or Micro Four Thirds or Super 35 can be a great addition to your gear bag, especially as a extra B-roll camera or a B or C camera during the ceremony and the speeches. But hey, if you have $600 more, you can actually get the GH7 which comes with even more amazing features that is just mind blowing where cameras are today. It's absolutely incredible. So if you wanna find out more about this camera, I will have all of the cameras that I'm talking about in the description down below. All right, next up is a camera system that I feel is incredibly underrated and one that doesn't get as much love as it should. 
And that of course is the Fujifilm X series, specifically the X-T50, ringing in at $1399, which is $200 less than the FX30, it includes some pretty impressive specs as well. You have a 40.2 megapixel APS-C CMOS sensor, 4K 60 or 6.2K video recording at 30 frames per second, 422 10-bit internal video recording, seven stops of internal image stabilization, and even 12-bit raw video capabilities via an HDMI. And I think the only deterrent making this an obvious choice for especially wedding filmmakers or people that do live events is the single SD card slot. Everything else from the price, the features, the quality, the design holds incredible value. But if you're just looking for one single camera, something that you can only afford one of right now, I don't think the Fujifilm would be my top choice, but it is something to consider, especially if you're just starting out. But if you do plan on having a backup, this camera is gonna be incredibly useful for you. And the last camera on my list, because it does fall under the $2,000 price tag by just a dollar, but I guess if you factor taxes, not really, but hey, it deserves to be on the list. And that is the Canon R6 Mark II. Now I mentioned this camera because it really has all the features that you would want to create a beautiful image. Does it have some caveats? Of course. Does it have limitations? Of course. It's Canon. It's going to. But I do want this video to be as objective as possible because I am looking at it through the lens of a beginner. And when I first started, Canon was one of my favorite brands. And as much as I hate to admit, it still offers an impressive catalog of cameras to choose from. Like the R8, this camera has a 24.2 full frame CMOS sensor. It offers dual SD card slot recording, 4K 60 frames per second, 10 bit internal recording, C-Log3, you get beautiful five axis image stabilization, as well as the option to record 6K external ProRes RAW. Will you do that for weddings? Probably not, but it is a cool feature. The only bummer, well, there's a few, but the few bummers that I have with the Canon R6 Mark II, ugh, puberty. The only qualms that I have with the R6 Mark II is the micro HDMI port, the overheating concerns, which are still present, yes, still prevalent in the R6 Mark II, might be a little bit better, but they're still there. And like the R8, the limitation in third-party lenses. But nonetheless, all of these cameras are quality, budget-friendly options to consider if you're just starting your video journey. I wish I could have kept this video even more low budget, but we have all found ourselves in a very expensive hobby and career. It's just the reality. But I wanna hear from you guys. What do you think of these cameras that I listed today? Do you use any of these for your own business? What cameras would you recommend for someone just starting out? Drop a comment below and until next time, keep creating and telling beautiful stories. Peace.